I'm not going to lie, even though I'm a big Dave Chappelle fan, I was kind of underwhelmed. Kind of underwhelming. It started off pretty decently, had some decent bits and pieces the first quarter, kind of fell off in the middle, a little bit okay after, and then it fell off again at the end. But it, it really did feel way more preachy than I'm used to when it comes to Chappelle. It felt really odd, like everything from like the clothes he's wearing, right? He's got this like shirt with his name on it, with his fucking, you know, initials on it. He's got a chain with his initials on it. The arena he was in had like a C on the side, a C to the left, a C behind, a C on the floor. It felt like he was a preacher at like Hillsong or something. It was really strange, very almost culty in a way. I don't know how to describe it. It just, I had a bit of an... I had a bit of an ick, a bit of an ick feeling when I was watching. I'm not going to lie. And I'm a big fan of um, Chappelle, but I felt like it just came across very cheap, very preachy, very self-aggrandizing, um, very full of himself, almost like, I almost feel like Dave Chappelle's getting to a point where he feels like he's just too funny for the audience to really understand. There's a joke that he mentions in the special where he basically says, oh, the joke that I'm going to do now, not everybody kind of gets it or something. It almost feels like he's doing it on purpose. Like he's kind of like, oh, if you don't get it, you don't, you're not funny or something. You don't know what funny is or something. It almost feels like he's trying to like challenge the audience to like, you know, get up to his level of humor or something. And it's like, bro, I don't think your humor is that great. And he's starting to sound a lot like Joe Rogan. He's starting to have a lot of Joe Rogan tendencies. Like he's starting to like sound a lot like a boomer. Like, and it happens overnight. I don't know what happens with these guys, but I think money and maybe the power, the isolation that the money and power brings you as well, it almost overnight turns them into weird boomer types. Like I felt a lot of like, you know, edgy uncle at the fucking dinner table at Thanksgiving, at Christmas or something, right? It kind of felt like that one, like that kind of, you know, the uncle that your dad tells you not to hang out with because he always says like the risque thing. He's the one in the family that doesn't go to church or he's the one that's been divorced a few times, just saying like an edgy thing to kind of get under people's skin, but it's not really funny, you know? He might say, you know, in, in an evening of dinner, he might say maybe one or two funny things, but the rest of it is a bit, I don't know. I didn't really like it. I'm not going to lie. It was very, 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 very underwhelming. Um, one thing that I thought was pretty cool about it, though, was that he did film it, if I'm not mistaken, in a uh, theatre that was like, um, if I remember correctly, I think it was like 1,225 capacity or something, right? So he could easily fill an arena. And I thought it was quite cool that a comedian of Dave Chappelle's level would purposely go and do a special in a smaller venue like that, right? Where it was like a smaller theater. It wasn't like a big arena type of thing. I thought that was pretty cool. I guess the whole reason behind it is that you want a space to be a little bit more intimate. You want it to feel a little bit more, you know, like the people to be like literally, as they say, on top of you. And that kind of felt like it, how the stage was and shit. But um, yeah, I wasn't fond of it. I'm not going to lie. The special wasn't that great. And um. I felt like he mentioned his wife too often. I felt like he was doing that on purpose because of all the rumors of him like cheating and shit, the rumors of the Azealia Banks hookup and shit. It felt like he went out of his way to overly mention he has a wife when he'd never really mentioned it before. It kind of felt a little bit like he kind of crowbarred him, crowbarred her in for a reason there. That was a bit strange. Um, the trans jokes as well, not to be a normie and not to sound like an MS, MSNBC person, but the trans joke are really tired also, I'm not going to lie. The trans jokes are really tired. Um, I'm not convinced by the trans community saying that, oh, Dave Chappelle has a secret kink for fucking trans people. I don't think that's the case. I just feel like it's, you know, it's an, it's an easy win for him because at the moment, or at any stage of his life, he's never going to be the edgy guy he was before, right? He's never going to be really counterculture in that way anymore. He's kind of, he's kind of adjacent to the establishment. So if he has an ability to get under people's skin with a subject um, that you have to try too hard to do, then I think he's going to do it with a trans thing. But I don't think he does the trans jokes as a way for him to like declare his secret love for trans women and shit. I don't think that's, that, that's the case. Or to conceal his love for trans women. I don't think that's the case. I just think it's an easy thing for him to kind of like, you know, to, to, to say that get under people's skin, for him to get some free press and stuff and marketing, whatever it may be. So I think that's why he includes it. But I don't think... Um, it comes from a sincere place. I just think it's done for the sake of trying to be a troll. And I just think 
when you're his age, being a being a tr being edgy, being an edge lord, being a, a contrarian, like it just doesn't look cool or sound right. It just looks a bit perfect. That's the only thing I'm thinking. It's just a bit like, really? Do you really need to go down this route again? It's just a bit like, eh. And comparing it to, again, the Shane Gillis special, I thought the Shane Gillis special was way funnier. But then again, I'm not too sure if this this type of comedy is just a different type vibe, you know? It's sort of like almost motivational speakerish. If I'm not mistaken, at the beginning of the special, there's a quote by one of my favorite writers, Henry David Thoreau. But he could be, you know, he could be he could be seen as somewhat of a self-actualization motivational speaker type of person also right in that kind of realm so there's a, so there's a henry david Thoreau quote in the beginning so that kind of sets a temp template for it you know it you know what you know what it kind of felt like a jordan peterson seminar i'm not gonna lie it kind of felt like a jordan peterson seminar that's what i'm gonna be honest a lot of those philosophical kind of you know um lessons without the fucking bible shit it kind of felt like a jordan peterson thing and i've been to a couple of jordan peterson sh you know seminar things and it kind of felt like that very almost cultish almost preacherish like just a bit weird you know just a bit weird i don't know i don't know i don't know i didn't really like it to be honest i was a bit disappointed to be fair